another night of chess and psychology. I am trying to come up with a new name for it, so if you have any suggestions, let me know. Um, today, we are finally one class away from wrapping up Cecilia Knows White. I still have to go over Rouser. Forgot about that momentarily. But we have done, uh, we've been doing Sicilian for uh, the past couple of months. So, um, well, ideally, uh, if you still have questions in it, either leave it in the comments or go watch the previous videos about the Sicilian playlist. To be fair, I kind of done, uh, I kind of wanted to do a Sicilian playlist because Caleb did a Sicilian as black playlist a while back. So it was more of a, you did it as black, I'm going to do it as white type of deal. And um, we had Dennis Bars here. I might have scared him off. <laughs> it's fine, he'll be back. But um, so if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. I am reading the live chat, the audience or not. Um, okay, I see Nikki has a proud game, which hopefully you'll show me in our next segment of Switch to Twitch, mm -hmm. where we analyze your games. Um, all right, so I'm gonna just uh, go ahead and jump in. So today we are gonna start, well, not start, but wrap up Guns N' Roses, which are my Sveshnikov we did last week, Kalashnikov we're doing this week, and a little weird uh, Queen B6 stuff that we will also cover because I had some fun and some hurtful experiences with it. So better to know than not to know. Another small part, just to mess with <laughs> uh, Tracy. Uh, so she forgot to log off her account from YouTube here. So if you guys want me to type in anything in the chat and pretend to be Tracy, I can. <laughs> so we can do that too. All right. Um, all right. Let's go jump in. Oh, there's a question. What's the topic of the class? Uh, Sicilian. We've been doing Sicilian for the past few months. Yep, pretty much since late November. So we should be done with it, not this week, but the week after that. So let's jump in this time. <laughs> All right, uh, let me also kill the noise here. Last thing I need is hearing the moves. So much fun, whoops, didn't do it, okay. So um, we, oh, um, there's a question in the Rosalimo, no. Uh, well, <laughs> Guns N' Roses, Rosalimo, we did mention d6 bishop b5 i i personally didn't have that great of an experience with knight c6 bishop b5 so it's not my um amazing recommendation i do like it but i prefer d4 much more so um all right so d4 take take and now there are multiple ideas here that um, black can do. First off, if g6, then we got c4, transfers to Maroxi, which we can go watch the video we did previously. Um, there are some d6 ideas, which d6 uh, can transfer to Rouser, like knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5, which we will do next week. Um, hello, fake Morris Ashley. There are some queen c7, some queen b6, which we'll do a little later. And finally, last week we talked about the E5 ideas more in depth. We're going to continue talking about E5s now. And we talked about, whoops, ideas surrounding knight f6 or, or actually early knight f6 is also a, a huge possibility. Uh, the one thing that I've always wanted to try but somehow I never did, I don't know why, is this why do you think this is a bad idea? Ah, I should have not given the smile. <laughs> but why do you think this is a bad idea? Yep, you're right, queen a5. I was hoping to trick somebody, but, well, yeah, be careful with your forks. So yeah, I really wish this would happen, but it can't. So that's why we, we usually play this, e5, knight up, 
and d6, now bishop g5, and now we got Sveshnikov, which we talked about last week, right? Bishop b 7 or b5, and a lot of funds. So, a lot, of, a lot of other things also can transfer to Sveshnikov, so be careful with that. After, um, so now we're talking about Kalashnikov, which is just a small difference in move order, but it kind of prevents your bishop g5, so let's say e5, knight up, let's say d6. We're going to come back and talk about a6 too. But now, remember, if your knight was on c3, the opponent knight was on f6, you would have bishop g5, right? But now you don't have that bishop g5. So what I wanted to talk about was the c4. Now, uh, you can play knight c3, but if you w went ahead and uh, played this knight c3, then opponent doesn't necessarily have to play knight f6. They could start with like a6, kick your knight away, and maybe go b5, and a or bishop e7, and they can just continue delaying knight f6. So I, I'm not the biggest fan of this. I kind of like c4. No more d5s for you, no more b5s for you. Yay. Um, so in this specific case, let's say we go ahead and jump into c4. However, there are multiple things that black can do right now in the, uh, by, you know, black doesn't want to play knight f6 just yet. If they play knight f6, then we still get our bishop g5 sooner or later. So a huge thing in Kalashnikov for black is that they, they want to delay their knight f6. So I'm going to just take a little bit of a side note and talk about a6 before I forget, because I do this. I keep getting too deep in a whole different line. I forget about this mini line that I wanted to talk about. So let's talk about it right now. What do you think we should do with this guy? Should we give the check or should we retreat? Also, St. Louis is extremely cold. I flew back from London yesterday and London was hotter than St. Louis this time of year. So I'm, I'm just, I miss. Also, uh, the, the in-person audience, I do not see you. So just feel free to speak up whenever you want. I know you're there, but this light is really blinding, so. Dorsa, I'd like to take a minute and restart the screen capture. It's working, it's just that's a little bit slow. Uh, sure. Let me, uh... For a second, I thought that was my cat. I thought that was <laughs> Do I need to do anything? No. Can they still see me? No. They just see the floor. Okay. Can they still hear me? They can still hear you. <gasps> nice. How are you guys doing? Cool. We good? Oh yeah. Awesome. So, speaking of a6, <laughs> now, yeah, the knight d6 is pretty cool. <coughs> Sorry. But the problem, well, not a problem, but you kind of have to know how to play it. So they're going to take, because if not, then king d7, nobody wants that. Take, take, and let's say they play queen f6. Now what do you do? Yeah, a6 is definitely playable, but white needs to know how to continue. And I really need to clear my throat. Do I cover the mic before I... <coughs> Alright. What should we do? Ah, uh, queen exchange is... Um, questionable because you this this knight that was up here you did one two three four moves just to help opponent develop so that then you can just exchange queens yeah nah you can but you're gonna be in trouble because opponent is just gonna attack you with tempi and tempi and tempi and ah. so queen d1 yep now let's talk about this position because it's weird right you got two bishops you got um weak dark squares 
but in return, actually, lies for two. But in return, you have no development, absolutely nada. So, what should we do about this? Let's say opponent plays queen g6. Now, what do you do? <laughs> exactly, you're kind of setting up for the next game. Yeah. Uh, well, you have to know what to do, and knight c3 is the best way to go about it. Let's say they develop, and this is this is kind of a fun way. H4, bishop e3 is also interesting, but h4 is something that I try too, and I have fun with. Um, the idea is simple: this queen is bothering you, not letting you get the bishop out. You just want to kick it. If they stop it, then you can block it. Again, you want to move this bishop. Uh, you have to be cautious with these d5 ideas, because when you take it then there can be different knight moves on attacking this guy so let's talk about for example knight d4 now let's get the bishop out defend and attack they will do the same take take and queen d3 i'm relatively comfortable with this let's say they take with the other knight again whoa whoa that was fun now you get queen d3 right and you're trying to castle uh, let's say now, I'm going to take a moment because I don't want to just tell you everything. So what do you think black, uh, white should do after f6? G4, whoa. Mm, the pawn can just take it though. Also, what if the pawn just takes this guy? Can I take and they can take back? Nah. Uh, be careful. This bishop is actually under attack. If you castle, they'll take it. So your your main idea to consider should be bishop back to e3. So let's say bishop e3, they take. Now what do you do? Yep, good choice. And now let's say they try to continue simple ideas because they also have to start wanting to save the king. And another point is you might have some stuff to do with these knights. Maybe take it right now, maybe try to play f4 to weaken it. You know, you have a lot of ideas. So queen f3, try to block this bishop movement and pawn movement. Now what do you do as white? I kind of like this knight e4, yeah. Makes sense, thank you, Nikki. Yeah, um, it's kind of a weird situation in the center, to be honest, uh, because you know we, we want to try to open it up, but at the same time we can't do that that easily. So let's see, what do you think we should do right now? What do you think? Let me actually help you out with what I think black should do. Let's say black is following the logic and trying to exchange off queens, right? Weak king, extra pawn, let's see if we can exchange off queens. Wait, why am I getting queen b6?
To be fair, taking is all right, but um, I don't think this would be my first choice personally because I would uh, hope for more uh, excitement with the queen. Right now, you, I mean, opponent still has to figure out ways to save the position and develop, but I mean, queen b3 makes more, whoops, sorry, taking first makes more sense if you take then I can simply take back with a rook if you take. Now I also have fun of four ideas. This endgame is better for white. I'm gonna just scroll through and show you how, for example, it could turn out. Fun pass pawn, really weak pawn. When do we get d6? I'm kinda excited about that. Yeah, that's fine too. Yeah. So this is how it could, for example, turn out. This is again, just an example. It doesn't have to be the exact thing. So let's go back, 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 even more back. And all right, we're gonna change gears and talk about knight b4 now. Still, same problem, but bishop d3 can be more problematic because then they can take it and then you would get stuck with double pawns. So why to move? What do you think we should do? Did I pull on something? Cool. Hello, Aaron. I see a push to deep on. I also see a take on over here. Wait. Yeah, I'm fine with this idea. Taking might be the best one. Now, if, ta if, if they actually attack over here and they want to eat that, then what do you do? Got to move the king, so what do you do? What are we thinking about? Yep, king d2, I agree fully. Let's say they stay with the commitment because if they don't, then we're taking it. So let's say they take. Now what do we do? D6, yep, thank you, chat. Yeah, D6, save this guy. Well, actually, it's kind of like in their eye, but save this guy. You want to eat this little guy. And yeah, your king is on D2, but it's not the end of the world for this king. So this is totally fine. I am very comfortable with this position. So, all right. Yeah, I mean, there's a, I guess there's a mention of bishop d3 as well, but no, I'm fine with this. The bishop d3, you have to be careful because uh, there could be like some e4s or some bishop f5s, and you might want to avoid getting yourself into uncomfortable positions like that. It would be uh, ideal to um, not let your opponent get slippery, as you probably hopefully remember. We've done a few segments on slippery dorsa. So. I've shown you some of the super weird games that I should not have uh, not lost, but I did. 
So if I manage to save it, either win it or draw it. So um, yeah, be very careful. We do not want to let opponents um, get away with I was gonna say murder because there's a TV show that I've been binging. <laughs> uh, but get away, slip away. Let's go with that. Let's let's keep things nice. Because you all know I can start talking about weird TV shows way too fast. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Um, all right. Let me go away. Yeah, I wanted to talk about this take and ah here what if they take back that was one thing that i wanted to talk about yeah i i watched dexter too i haven't watched the new season i kind of want to but i'm almost done i just finished season 13 of criminal minds so uh, it's like two more seasons left i'm too committed at this point <laughs> um so I, I have to finish that first sorry it's too fun Mentalist is on, t on my to watch list as well. <laughs> I need to find more chill TV shows. I watched Arrested Development and I felt like I actually started to use some of the puns and it felt weird in, you know, real life society. <laughs> so that was not that was not a very practical TV show. <laughs> yeah, but it was fun to watch. All right. So, King E7, what do we do? Got to stop thinking about TV shows not if possible. If you have good recommendations, seriously, do let me know. I'm running out of stuff to watch. I mean, Bishop D3 is kind of nice because you kind of have to at this point. If take, then queen takes, queen takes. Now this end game, I kind of want to get an. Uh, I kind of want to get your evaluation on it. What are we thinking? Crash landing on you? Whoa. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I'm not sure how I feel about it. But I mean, whatever I watch is probably better than a lot of things I've already watched. So, all right. So, what do you think, end game wise? Yay or nay? Well, I mean, white definitely has a little bit of a. Um, little bit of a thing going on but i agree it might not be as easy as you would want it to be so for example for example right now let's say a point plus b5 then you can get the king up or play a3 and this is a fine position but right now i also saw in chat d6 whoa d6 was something that was mentioned and I think that you guys were correct. D6 is a pretty good idea uh, because now after D6, let's say they go king to F8. What do you do then? Ooh. Anything? Any feelings? Well, to be fair, I wouldn't really call this a blunder because if they do end up taking it, we take, they take, we get to Long Castle, and if Leeches makes the move, thank you, Leeches. And then here we can simply. Let's say king moves, kick the knight, let's say knight moves, we give another check. This is really great. I'm, I'm loving this position. I'm not really concerned about how to continue this. So, yeah, d6 taking is just in our benefit. So let's say the king goes back, now we get bishop d3. And if they take, it's like the same thing, but we push the king away. So it's 
even a little bit better. This is completely fine for white. Uh, let's say they go D8. Again, we can do the same thing and wrap it up with a long cast. Uh, I guess I mean rook H6 is a still a possibility. Uh, but if F5, this kind of still weakens their position. So with knight G5, they can't take just yet because I have knight F7, right? So I'm 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 fine with that. All right. Okay, that was way too deep way too unnecessary all right let's just go back there was only one other line i wanted to mention i'm gonna do a big jump here because we talked about 97 now let's talk about d5 and then we're gonna wrap up a6 so d5 what do we do should, should we take it Can we capture with the queen? Ooh, um it's possible, but if you take with the queen, then you have to be careful with possible knight d4s or bishop e6. So do you have answers on those? Well, let's start with knight b4. What would you do if knight goes to b4? Yep, you're right. That's great. I'm happy with that. So let's say bishop e6. Wait, how? Um, I would move the queen to d6. Ah. Uh, but then rook d8 can also again get problematic. If there was no rook d8, I like this. But with rook d8, it gets also very scary because now you actually have to deal with um, possible threats like this. Make sense? So that's kind of why queen d5 um, brings the queen out to the line of fire way too early. Um, so, whoa, that's kind of why I like the idea of taking with the knight a little bit more. Taking with the pawn possible too, but the knight before, and then this is another problem. If we get out there, then they can take, we take, they can take. Ooh, I'm not liking this that much. Even if knight d4, you do that, and then they can just take this, and nah. So that's why taking with the knight to actually threaten something big as well. So now, let's say, um, let's say they take over here. What should we do now? Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to give opponents unnecessary powers. I think I see something like a Tracy. All right, we gotta stop the check. What do you think is the best way to do it? Let me put the T somewhere else so I actually don't do what I did last, not last week, the week before that. I'm getting a lot of bishop e3s. I don't think, I, I think I only have one or two bishop e2s. People are definitely more um, voting for bishop to e3. Yep, I like bishop e3. Let's say now they do knight d4. Again, attacking you and that guy. So what should you do now?
97 is getting a lot of love, so let's talk about that. Okay, all right, okay, 97. Let's say, hmm. Yeah, I definitely do like this. So let's say 97, then king got a move, fair. Now what? Should he defend this or pick this guy up? It's a lot of tactics here. To be fair, I've never had this position. Uh, I've had very few Kalashnikovs happen to me in over the board chess. A lot more in Blitz and in online chess. But uh, still, like this is kind of a crazy, <laughs> crazy line. So um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think too much on it if you don't play this um, just gonna know the main ideas I'm just gonna trying to show you that how crazy it can get and how important it is for you to actually know it but you don't have to obsess over it you don't have to feel like oh my god I don't, I, I don't remember that one line and move 20 and yeah okay man I wish I could take this legally so all right let's talk about the defensive move first let's say rook c1 the problem is bishop g4 another attack now you go queen d3 they can take and then you know this is a still a comfortable position but still a lot of a uh, lot of small problems so let's say you still push they still defend i'm just gonna show you this is all computer line i looked over a little while back and I'm just gonna just I'm just showing you some of the possibilities of how crazy things can get. Oh boy. Again, you do not need to know this line to this depth. You just need to know where your pieces belong, what is something that your opponent really wants to do, and how can you stop it. Alright? So let me go a bunch back. Now we talked about Rook C1 and they were like, eh, maybe. So let's talk about queen d3 now. Let's say they take this with check. Now what do we do? <laughs> I see that a lot of... Uh, DM, yes, you're correct. We're trying to do the... I can never pronounce it. I just kind of, kind of call this guns and roses instead of... Lowenthal Sicilian. I'm 100% sure I just said that completely wrong. But... Uh, these are all kind of in, in line with Kalashnikov, so... Let's say we gotta move the king, yep, let's say they take, take, they take that. Now what do we do? Do we take this back or do we take that guy? I agree. Let's say they're trying to save the horsey, well, I mean the knight. <laughs> now what? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ben, for the poll, because I'm going with that. Now what do we do? Let's activate some pieces. Yep, let's get them activated. Let's continue activation. And I'm, I'm fine with this position. I mean, black still has a lot of stuff that they can do, so I'm not really that comfortable with it. But I think, I think this is fine. This is a fine position. Right? A little scary, but nothing we can't handle. Alright, I'm gonna do a jump. Big, big jump. Whee! Okay, actually, a ginormous jump. So we talked about d5, we talked about queen g6, and I just want to briefly mention this guy. I mean, scary because you have advantage, but it's kind of hard to actually be able to um, use it. Because opponent has a lot of different ways that they can bother you.
How are we doing? Okay, let's get pieces out. Yep, again, this h4. Again, you can also have a fun game with just bishop e3, but I think h4 makes it even spicier because you are possibly not entirely sure which side you want to castle, but it does make sense to keep your options open. So, um, let's say now they play h6. See, this is immediately a very fun threat. Let's get the bishop out, let's get ready for potential long castle. And finally, can we get this long castle? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. See, yep, long castle would be fun. All right, oh, that was a long stuff. All right, I'm sorry to move on from this part. We don't want to talk about that, we don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about not a6 now, so d6. Oh boy, that took forever. Okay, so d6. Remember how uh, we initially started talking about d6 and then we were like, hmm, let's move on and talk about a6 for a minute? Well, that minute took about 30 minutes. So uh, for d6, it's important to be aware of how you should play, which is you can't play bishop g5, you don't want to play nice to um, c3 too early. So let's say you go c4, you're going to prepare for knight c3. All right, so bishop e7. There are bishop e6 as well. Knight, bishop e6. I'm kind of comfortable with just getting the piece out, getting knight a3. And I'm going to follow up with bishop e3. And I'm going to continue possibly short castling because if, you know, I've already played c4, I don't really feel comfortable going long castle. So let's say something like this. Yeah, I can just short castle. Uh, if they go, for example, bishop e7, now what do you think we should do? Hello, SE. How are you doing? I mean, knight a3 was a force, so Troy boy, are you alright, buddy? I like the idea of bishop d3. Uh, the main thing to consider right now is this guy over here is, how do I put it delicately? Useless, let's go with that. <laughs> so um, in our, it, has a, it can be purposeful when it comes to c2. It stops this knight to d4. It may serve as a knight d5 idea. So I like that. So for that reason, I think it might be a nice idea to uh, go knight c2 first. Now, another thing is when they played this bishop e7 without knight f6, they might want to pile up and play bishop g5, which means they would want to exchange off these bishops, which in return means if these bishops are off, then knight d4 and the d4 square, which is outpost, uh, gets too weak for us. So with knight c2, we kind of hold off on it. We still have to take it. We don't really have much of a choice there. But now our d4 square is already covered. So, some of the other many things that we can do now is h4, is queen d2. I'm not that big on queen d2 to be honest, but it's doable. Knight e3, not that big on knight d3 either, or knight d5. Knight d5, I kind of hope when they take, somehow my knight could take it. So, the ideal position, because of the pawn structure, would be to get rid of this bishop and one knight and wait. Yep. And wait, I really want to eat this though. Yeah, the ideal pawn structure would be to if we could kind of get rid of this and keep a knight versus a bishop, uh, because the position is kind of closed. So if we could keep one knight versus that bishop, that bishop could have to be constantly defending here. This is a weak pawn that we could continue attacking. So a lot of fun. Um, H4 is. 
fine. However, let's say queen goes back and then you would have to move this queen. Uh, possible, but are you really going to go long castle? I'm not saying no, but I'm saying ah, you have to, you know, be aware of long castle c files open, possible b files it could get really really crazy. Actually, someone is asking why not take? Why not take? Let's talk about that. Seriously, why not? Yep, a little bit of a problem with this. Oops. Yeah, rook d is not going to be fun. Let me just tell you that. So, uh, let's say we don't allow checkmate. Uh, queen d2 is a possibility. I don't really like it though. Take, take. Ugh, it's playable, but do you really want to play this endgame? I know I don't. Sorry, I know I don't. All right. The other thing is, how about nice e3? Let's talk about that. So far, h4 feels like the 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 most logical continuum, but I'm hoping to avoid that. So let's talk about knight e3. Knight e3, they can go knight d4. Then what do we do? I'm seeing some some stuff to c2, but we just came there. I'm seeing some stuff to d5, maybe. Maybe now knight e2. Kind of weird, right? Let's say they take, we take, rook d8, castle. It's kind of a ah, uh, not not my not my type of scenery. Yeah, I don't really like this that much. I mean, white has a tiny bit of a more comfortable position, but still, h4 seems to be the better one. Now, finally, what about knight d5? What am I threatening with knight d5? This, right? If they take it, I'm pretty happy because I actually get to take it with a c, which means I actually win this guy. Well, this pile. Knight moves away, knight e3, I improve my knight. I'm joining over here, so let's say they develop. I give a check. They can't even play b5, right? Because I'll just take it. Yay. Let's say they move. Then again, this is way too comfortable. I'm very much loving this. So they can't take it. So let's say they go rook c8. Now what? I see the chat is taking their time. Did I possibly um, startle you? Chat is quiet. Okay. Ch oh, G three. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, thank you to Super. Wait. To Sue Bakura. I like that. Let's say they get out, we get out. F5. Now what do you do? G3 is pretty cool, I agree. Alright, so now let's say I 
I like it. Thank you, comedy and entertainment. And Tsubakura. Not lovely. Let's say they move. They cast low. They cast low. This is a very fine position. Also, Black has to play so many correct moves. He, it's good for them. Which position? When you move your pawn to, uh, yeah, and then you cast those. And yeah, is, is, is that a good position? Yeah, you? white has white is more promising because white has a tad bit more space, like something queen side, king side, center, white has more control. Whereas black is just kind of in a more defensive style. Uh, black hopefully, I mean, black is kind of hoping to get some stuff happening in the queen side slash center maybe, but the king side is pretty blocked. Um, Let's say we just play b4 now. They can't even take it comfortably because now b5 and they have to deal with another weakness. Uh, yes, the king is not as comfortable as we would hope, but at the same time, I don't think that's a huge problem because, um, well, to be fair, they're not really attacking it. If they, ha if they for example, had a bishop uh, uh, here, yeah, I wouldn't be as comfortable. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, awesome. And actually, this question: Why not take? What's what's? Why not take? Yeah, let's talk about that. No, wait, wait, wait. Um, yeah, yeah, you're you're fine because if take then the bishop falls. We don't want that. So yes, you're right. Take back with the knight. Also attacking the knight. So let's say they hit this guy, and then we continue attacking. We could have also taken over here. So that can happen next move too. Not a big deal. And yes, it's kind of chaotic. <laughs> um, but they can't cast though. We can. That's a huge difference. Um, when I do end up castling, my king is safer than their uncastled king. I have the chance to open up center, my pieces are better than their pieces. So because of the tiny advantages here and there, we have advantage overall. So, yeah. Alright, cool. Uh, okay, that was a ginormous line. So if they do bishop e7, bishop g5, we can't take. So the, the funnest ones, the most fun ones, were h4 and knight d5. So I'm kind of going to leave it up to you to make that decision. Oh boy, that was a big one. Now, no more bishop e6 talks. What if bishop e7 already? Should we still go knight c3? We can. There's some weird b3s. You can do this. You can do that. You have a lot of options. I'm fond of knight c3. If they attack me, I'll come back. And now, black has three ideas. Either get this knight out, either get this bishop out, or some weird f5. I don't really want to spend too much time on f5, because with f5, we can simply take, and then follow up with bishop d3. And you are eventually going to make this maneuver. The only big difference when f5 happens is that the d5 square out the d5 outpost square is no longer as weak as we were hoping it to be so taking is a it is a you know it's a big change but it's completely fine and i'm just gonna kind of show you how it could get really interesting now this is still a strong pawn you have this going on for you whoops and your knights are really good how do we get the bishop well b3 and we can try to activate it from different diagonal, for example. And this position is completely fine for white. And the main game is going to happen in the queen side though, so just keep that in mind. There was one other thing I wanted to mention. Ah yeah, bishop e2 is also possible. Not the biggest fan because knight f6 and you know, still the same ideas, but I kind of really, really like this bishop d3 more. If they take, well, hallelujah, because now this is a true weakness. They can't really stop it from happening. I exchange off my bad bishop with their good bishop, so I'm very fond of that. 
So that was F5. I mean, can't go more in depth, but that was kind of the big part of it. There is knight f6 as well. Now with knight f6, you can start with knight c2 or you can go bishop d3. A lot of the ideas are the same. So you just kind of have to come up, figure out what move order works best for you. And for example, I'm just going to show you, let's say knight c2 first. Knight c2 is fine, but you might be giving up the b5 square too early. Let's say they go bishop e6, you just very comfortably you're trying to develop and out of the out of nowhere you get f5s wait you get f5 ideas you get b5 ideas so what i'm trying to say is you can't play it too chill you still have to figure out how to defuse opponent's threats hopefully yeah even though if they're not actively trying to play f5 or b5 it doesn't mean that your position is safe so you can do whatever you want that's something that i really see very 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 often with players of any level they just get comfortable in the position all of a sudden and then they just lose control of it so don't do that and finally let's talk about bishop d3 and now again you're gonna do the same ideas in the queen side this is a weakness, we would love to attack it. If we get knight d3, even better. If we don't, that's fine too. d5 square is going to be a huge part in this. And this is a comfortable position. Black has some ideas in the king side. We have a lot of ideas in the queen side. Um, white is overall more comfortable. So that is one thing you should keep in mind. Okay, that was a lot of talking. Now. If bishop e6 first, again, you can continue with either bishop d3, knight c2, or bishop e2. Again, similar ideas. And again, you are going to want to get this knight to e3. You're going to prepare for it. You don't want to lose control of the, of the d4 square too fast. You're just going to prepare. And this is a very comfortable position. Black does not have too many long-term ideas. So, um, yeah. Be very mindful on this. All right, there was one other line that I did want to talk about. However, briefly, we're gonna switch gears just a little bit, and jump to boom. There we go, queen b6. Come on, leeches, jump. Come on. Good little leeches. All right, it's gonna be a real quick idea. Oh, uh, sorry, there is a question. Um, what is the queen side weakness? Demon attack in the central pawn. Yeah, the d6. And also when we have a pawn on c4 and we have a rook on c1, we can start pushing b and c. So you don't really have a weakness in your king side. So black is just kind of trying to poke around and find something. But for the most part, you are fine. All right, so this queen b6 idea. How is this how is this working out for you? <coughs> so queen b6. Um, what I like to do ouch is knight b3 followed by knight c3 and then I really really like this a3 because I just don't want bishop b4. If bishop b4 gives up on unhappiness, I'm gonna take it away. <laughs> okay, that probably sounded meaner than it was intended, but yeah, seriously, if opponent is gonna do something, just take it away, don't let them have it. So a3. Now, the only thing with a3 that you should be aware of is sometimes you might actually want to do long castle so if you have a3 it's kind of uncomfortable but i've had a lot of experiences with bishop b4s so that it just ugh, no it really bothered me so i just went for a3 and i've had multiple opponents playing a6 with me and um this is this game is a while back i actually had this game in um nine years ago Oh, that hurts. Yeah, I had this game nine years ago. Um, it was, I remember, it was the last round of Asian EU Championship 2013. It was the second time I won it. So, and I went for Bishop D3. 
Come on, Bishop D3. And my idea was simple. I'm going to just, you know, go bananas on the third rank. <laughs> and it paid off. And the idea is this kind of looks like a Scheveningen because a lot, and if you go back and watch the Scheveningen videos, we really talked about f4s, we talked about a lot of bishop to e3s, the knights were kind of similarly placed. So yeah, this is a, this is a lot of fun. And again, if you go back and relook the Scheveningen videos, we also talked about some possible g4s. And in this specific game, it paid off. You have to be very careful when you're doing stuff like this. But to be fair, it was the last round I had already won the tournament, and I just wanted to go bananas, so. Yeah, and like, see, opponent already starts to break under pressure, and she was a very reasonably rated person. She was, sorry, she was like 1960, very uh, feeder rated, so she wasn't a, the, she wasn't a professional. Anyways. So I s immediately got a nice attack, immediately. And again, now I just want a piece. And the rest of it is kind of just too easy because I had extra material and I just really, really wanted to do tactics and she really let me. So I was very happy about that because, you know, it's just tactics, beautiful, beautiful bishop checkmates. I think I want to end it right now because this is as best as it gets with the position. <laughs> Bishop checkmates winning Asian youth nine years ago. Oh my god. But yeah, um, we're going to take a quick break and go to Twitch when we're going to go analyze your games. So have your games ready for us. Join us on Twitch and in about five ish minutes, I got to go pay some respects. Tracy, you got to come up here and switch to, to twitch and next week we will finally have our last sicilian ever actually that's not fair not ever <laughs> but the last sicilian of this playlist so it was a pleasure being here um yeah have a great rest of your week bye